Let's start with an idea that surfaces exert forces. It's not a new idea. It's a hypothesis, a successful hypothesis that explains many of the things that liquids do. I can demonstrate these forces by catching a soap film on a wire frame. The fact that the tension in the film is uniform in all directions explains the circular arc of the thread. To enlarge the film, I must do work. Force times distance. Pulling down the thread increases the area, takes energy to pull more molecules up into the surface. Another example of the pull of surfaces is given by a loop of thread placed on water. Soap molecules lower the surface tension of water. The higher pull of the outer surface pulls the loop into a circle. The old camphor boats operate on the same principle. Where the camphor touches the water, the surface tension is reduced, and the higher surface tension on the bow pulls the boat forward. Particles of camphor scraped onto a water surface will also move. The camphor dissolves unevenly around the edges. In this film, we shall examine the effects of these surface forces on the shapes and the motions of liquids. The angles at which surfaces intersect are determined by the pull of surfaces. If three soap films meet, they must meet symmetrically in order for the pull of the surfaces to balance. The angles are all equal, all of 120 degrees. More than three films cannot intersect, except momentarily. You can see that four films meeting are unstable. A more complicated circumstance occurs where solids and liquids meet. With drops of water on wax, the water, the wax, and the air clearly do not occupy the same angles. It is not so readily apparent that solid surfaces exert a pull. Instead, it is more useful here to consider surface energies. Just as it took work to pull out a liquid surface, it takes work to create a solid surface. The contact angle is that which leads to the minimum available energy of the system. Here is mercury on glass. Notice that the mercury angle is larger than 90 degrees. If the liquid angle is larger than 90 degrees, we say that the liquid does not wet the solid. With a drop of water on a bar of soap, you see that the liquid angle is less than 90 degrees. The water wets the soap. If we accept this hypothesis that surfaces exert forces, we find that there are three boundary conditions expressing these forces that need to be used with the continuum equations of fluid mechanics. We've just seen examples of the first that where surfaces meet, the contact angle is uniquely determined by the energies of the interfaces. The second boundary condition comes from a force balance across surfaces. One finds that a curved liquid surface has a higher pressure on the concave side. For example, the higher pressure inside forces the smoke out. The energy of the surface becomes converted to the kinetic energy of the smoke jet. 
we can calculate this higher pressure. Consider the upper half of a gas bubble immersed in a liquid. Surface tension will pull down all around the equator with a total force equaling the surface tension expressed as force per unit length times the length of the circumference. That must be balanced by an upward force, the pressure difference times the area at the equator. This simplifies to the pressure difference equaling twice the surface tension divided by the radius of the bubble. A soap bubble, because it has both an inner and an outer surface, would have a pressure difference twice as large. The spherical case is a special case of the more general equation that involves the two radii of curvature necessary to specify curvature of a surface. A spherical bubble has these two radii equal. This equation also indicates that the pressure inside small bubbles must be large. It suggests that an infinite pressure difference would be required to generate new bubbles. And it is, in fact, very difficult to make new bubbles. We apparently see many being generated in boiling water, for example. These, and practically all of the bubbles you will ever see, are not new. They are pinched off enlargements of other bubbles, usually of vapor pockets, in cracks where liquid has never completely penetrated. This glass beaker was carefully cleaned. It contained very little dirt with cracks to act as bubble saucers. If we pinch a small glass tube to create a gas-filled cavity, and then bring this rod down into the layer of superheated water, we find that it acts as a nucleation site that it can generate any number of new bubbles. The vapor cavity never completely disappears. A small amount always remains ready to act as a new nucleation site. Actually, it is possible to make new bubbles in a liquid, but you won't do it by normal boiling. Water carefully cleared of all bubbles can withstand a tensile stress of over 5,000 pounds per square inch. Water molecules attract each other so strongly that it takes at least that much tension to pull them apart. When a liquid contains a large amount of dissolved gas, such as carbon dioxide, it comes out as bubbles. It comes out wherever there are nucleation sites that provide a surface across which the molecules can pass into vapor spaces. It may appear that this liquid does not contain much dissolved gas. We can check that by introducing the roughened end of a glass rod. You see that there is a lot of dissolved carbon dioxide in the liquid, only waiting for nucleation sites to come out as bubbles. The water in this faucet is being held up against gravity by surface tension. Notice that the curvature is sharper at the bottom of the drop to withstand the higher hydrostatic pressure there. When the weight of the drop gets too large for the upward pull of surface tension around the drop, it falls. If these drops had been alcohol with its lower surface tension, they would not have been so big. One of these burettes is filled with water, one with alcohol. The alcohol, with its lower surface tension, comes out as smaller drops. Another way of showing that water has a much higher surface tension than alcohol is to dip glass tubes into water and alcohol. Both liquids wet the glass, so each upper surface, or meniscus, is curved upward. The liquid therefore rises until the pressure difference